Hi everyone, welcome to a new edition of our Agora Studio visit. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for all your wonderful messages and comments. Um, let's get started. Sabrina, do you want to introduce today's guest, surprise guest? Sure, absolutely. Hi everyone, I'm Sabrina, the Director of Marketing and PR. Uh, welcome back. Today we have Michelle, who will be joining us from Kansas City, and Charlene, who is joining us from Scottsdale as well as the gallery's former director, Angela DiBello, um, joining us from Florida. So we're so excited to have everyone here. Uh, we'll do some walkthroughs of your studio spaces, talk about your work and your practices, and perhaps how uh, current times are influencing your work. And we're really excited. So, um, Sha, would you like to kick us off? Sure. Okay. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Sha. I'm joining from Kansas City, Missouri with the great gloomy weather outside. I'm very jealous for all you Florida and Arizona nice weather peeps here. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much for inviting me to participate in this. This is actually my very first open studio. Uh, I'm glad it's a virtual open studio, kind of eases me in a little bit. Very excited to share with everyone my workspace here in a second, my creative process, and I do have some new pieces coming up now that I no longer need to leave my house. The artist lifestyle really kicks in here. I'm from China originally. I came to the States about seven years ago, originally from school. Uh, Goes through some pretty crazy stuff that I'm not going to elaborate here just yet, but like if you guys go on my Instagram, you'll see a lot of my crazy posts on my stories. But uh, when some through some crazy things in the past few years definitely has some ups and downs when it comes to the whole mental health issues which is why a lot of my art is uh, definitely tuning towards mental health awareness uh, that was also when I started building a very deep connection with art or more precisely painting because before I came here uh, my route I chose for myself was actually writing I was a published web fiction writer in China and I did that full time for many many years and I came here and realized uh, painting kind of allowed me to visualize and also express many feelings and more abstract thoughts that I wasn't necessarily capable of putting into words, especially since English, you know, is my second language. That made it a lot harder too. And before I realized art kind of became my way to communicate with the outside world, um, that kind of more sensitive and intimate things, the things I couldn't really either clearly say or just because of my upbringing that made me feel like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't really talk about that kind of personal stuff. And with art, it's, you know, it's a lot more easily interpreted by other people. And I actually built a lot of good connections and made new friends through that way. So, you know, what I think about my art, I think it's like about relationships, either it's the relationship for me and myself or between me and my friends or different people. Then I grew up as a Buddhist. So by the way, I do eat meat. We are allowed to eat meat. <laughs> so yeah, also a lot of my art focus on like relationship between the human and nature and the universe. But ultimately, I just kind of use my art to express myself and share with other people the things I've learned through my past years of life, both in China and here in the States. Kind of just hoping at, somebody, uh, at some point, people will find peace and comfort when they look at my work. So like, okay, this is not such a bad day because someone else out there kind of feels the same way as I do uh, along that line. And you know how they always say like, Ex excuse me, yeah. excuse me, Sha. Do you, I love your work, by the way. Yeah. It's very uplifting. It's very positive. It's beautiful. Thank you. I particularly liked um, Acris Descending. Yes. Yes. It's a very complex painting. I'm wondering though, during this time of, um, isolation if you've given any thought or created any works of art that depict uh, the challenges that we face today um, as far as the pandemic goes uh, I'm gonna move my laptop with me I'm okay with it <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't done anything excuse me yes pandemic specific but uh uh, for me, this pandemic kind of forced me to re, uh, like communicate with myself 
because I actually just went through a really harsh end of relationship and the painting you like so much. So mm. that person stole many of my paintings. So unfortunately that Ooh. was actually among the stolen work. Oh, that's not good. But with the pandemic, like I kind of was forced, this is my little watercolor space, by the way, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So this is the watercolor piece I'm working on right now. The title is Maniac. So I kind of, mm -hmm. since I don't, you know, get to leave my house and work and like hang out with my friends anymore, now I don't have the choice but to sit down and reflect on what really happened and to look on some things I, yeah, I personally refuse to look at. <laughs> so that's piece back there and also I'm walk, walking towards my uh, back porch studio that has a little bit more light too. So this, these, these are all my acrylics back here. And it's a lot, a lot about understanding myself. As you can see, this one here definitely has more Buddhism reflection in it. That little squeaking sound that you're hearing right now is my guinea pig standing on my foot. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, yeah, so I have these studio spaces. And as far as pandemic goes, like I said, I, am, uh, I definitely have a big focus on mental health awareness. And I've actually heard a lot of my friends just kind of lashing out because um, my day job, I run my own business. So the business community is very sociable. It's all about going out and build connections. And when this was taken away, the first reaction I started to see on my friends' communications was they are stressed out. They're kind of mm -hmm. like animals getting cornered because right. you lost your old way of life and options to do what you like want. So the a few pieces I paint I am painting and I'm sketching right now is either about uh, sharing, like what we were talk, talking earlier, being present is more important than ever, and we kind of need to hold hands with each other, and also more exploration in what do you actually see when all your distractions are forcefully taken away, and then you right. really have to make peace with yourself, because if you right. can't, like this little. This one here, I kind of went off the idea of needing to know your own red flags. I'm not very good. Because as you can see, there are puffer fish in here. So it's mostly about like knowing your own red flags, knowing what usually triggers an old, less healthy pattern in your lifestyle. So yeah, most of my painting kind of come that way from small concepts I've thought about or things I hear from my friends who are struggling. Yeah. Uh -huh. Have, uh, are you going to the studio more often now because you're you're not working obviously in oh, your other career in your other partner. career? Oh, your studio's your apartment. Yeah, well, you, just, well, you don't have to go far. Exactly. So that's <laughs> what I was telling Sabrina. Like, I'm going to be worried about getting back into human society when this is over because my studio yeah. is my apartment, and I work remote most of the time as well. <laughs> Have you become more disciplined with regard to how much time you spend in your studio and yeah. how you spend that time and having an agenda for yourself? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, now that I don't have, because before my biggest challenge of being able to sit down and paint was because uh, my daytime business takes a lot of my time and the majority of that time was spent on driving around to different events and venues. Now that is taken away, I actually was able to segment my time and at least, right now I'm dedicating at least two, three mm. hours a day just to paint. Oh, good. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm reminded of uh, Mark Rothko, uh -huh. who uh, used to, in order to shift gears from his home to his studio, which was not in his apartment, obviously, but he would actually change into a business suit. So he wore yeah. a suit and a tie and he had a briefcase and he would walk to his studio mm -hmm. and then he would change into his work clothes mm -hmm. and then he would clean up, change back. So it, it might be an interesting exercise yeah. for you to change clothes before. I have to do the exact same <laughs> thing because uh, I wasn't self for many years, you know, and they mm. trained us, you need to dress up for your work. Right. So technically eight to five Monday through Friday is my business hour. So I will like get up, get all dressed up, <laughs> business attire. Right. And when I go into studio, I don't change it completely. 
because sometimes I just throw a fist during my business <laughs> hour and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go paint because I just want to. So I really just put on like a large apron if I'm going into my studio. Then if I come out, I change back and get back yeah. ready for business. So that's actually a real thing that's also practiced by a few of my other artists. Yeah, friends. it's kind yeah. of ritualistic in a way, mm -hmm. you know, it gets yeah. your mindset. Are, how are you doing with... Um, uh, supplies do you have enough uh, materials and are you able to get them freely I'm lucky because I uh, was very well stocked up before this and you know with my personal life going I kind of had to take a pause on my art for over a year but I was still continually stocking up our supplies throughout that year yeah. so now I'm Fabulous. going through my stash <laughs> Uh, for, uh, as far as Kansas City goes, uh, like we have a few slightly larger art supply stores, one of them being Blick, and Blick does still have deliveries. The oh, only thanks. concern we have right now is what's going to happen if the, you, uh, the postal system shuts down. Like that's one right. thing that will affect our supply chain. But as for myself, I'm, I think I'm good for about another two months. So hopefully by then uh, we'll be able to get out more freely yeah me too well you have a lovely studio thank you you really do and uh, i like your energy i like your work i'm i'm curious to know why you've decided to work in a smaller format rather than larger pieces so one of the biggest uh, restriction of course is the fact this is my apartment and the space is pretty limited and then I guess I've never really just ventured into it I definitely have been thinking about going towards slightly larger work maybe later this year mm -hmm. at this point to be honest financial cost is one of my larger concerns especially mm -hmm. with you know, how things are right now I'm paying really close attention to my numbers and larger works when it comes to, especially since I work on um, my watercolor, those are all handcrafted paper. So the larger it gets, price right. doubles, <laughs> there's no reason. So yeah, that's definitely a huge restriction for me right now. All right, well, that's, it's a good reason, certainly. Yeah. And at some point you may want to consider going larger mm -hmm. because I, I kind of envisioned your work as being larger than it Thank is. Flocked Light, is that the title? Flocked Light, mm -hmm. which is a watercolor and ink on paper. That's a lovely, lovely painting as well. Thank you. Uh, you seem to be very comfortable in the way you work with watercolor and ink, which are not easy to work with, obviously. Yeah. Watercolor is yeah. one of the most difficult mediums to work with. Thank you. Yes, yeah. I have bunnies. <laughs> so I can show you. Yes, yeah. we'd love to see your bunnies. <laughs> Aww. Can you see them? Yep. Oh, yeah. What's, yeah. what's the bunny's name? Estelle. Your studio so, friend. Estelle. This one's little Estelle. Dowdy. She's the youngest girl. This is my oldest boy. He's over five years old now. Oh, my. How, yeah, how old do they live? Years, actually. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh. I had a... Um, there are a few so others I, that's <laughs> nicer right now. Uh, when my daughters were, were very young, I decided to buy them a bunny because they wanted a bunny. And it was the most adorable thing. It was a oh, tiny yeah. little black rabbit. And it grew to be the size of a chihuahua. I mean, it was huge. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, the rabbit was addicted to wallpaper and ate the wallpaper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they can't help it. They can't help it. I first got no. these things. They ate almost every single one of my power cords. <laughs> yes. Yeah, power cords, right? <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, bunny. <laughs> I know about that bunny. All right. <laughs> okay. Super. Well, so all right. Well, thank you, Shell. I yeah, yeah, I love your studio space as well. It's so it's it's cozy and fresh. I that yeah. outdoor space is really indoor outdoor. Three yeah. season room is such a nice thing. It's have. not insulated though, so it's actually really oh, cool. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's yeah. It helps you keep a sharp mind with the colder weather. That's true. That's true, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, super. Well, Charlene, would you like to 
give us your tour. Yes, thanks for having me. This is so great. I'm really happy to be here. I'm also a little bit sad because I was supposed to be in New York at your gallery this Aww. weekend. Yeah. Vividing. So it's it's a strange experience. But um, yeah, this is great. And it's so nice to, to put a face to a name because we've been talking via email. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, very nice to meet you. Nice to um, meet you. <laughs> I'm in Arizona right now. I'm a Canadian. I, ha I live in Canada, but I also live part time in Arizona. And so I've been back and forth right now. I'm here and sort of quarantined. And so I'll show you my studio here. I figure out how to, how to work this. Um, I'm lucky I have sort of three parts to my studio. Well, this is my garage and that that right there is my snake fence <laughs> because in Arizona we have a lot of snakes. <laughs> And uh, this is some of the work that I'm doing um, right now. These are some of my unfinished pieces. And then this is my office where I meet with clients. And then in the mornings, I often paint through here because the light is different. So that's Oh, you can see my, the wind blew my canvas down. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is my space. And uh, here I have some merchandise. We're right now selling these t-shirts with my art on it. Um, and the proceeds go to healthcare workers. So Fantastic. that's sort of, yeah. So we're really, um, you know, trying to be, it's right now a difficult time, I think, for artists. And... In some sense, it's been great for me um, to paint because I've been low on inventory. But uh, on the other hand, it's yeah, it's a very reflective time. And low on inventory is a good problem <laughs> to have. Yeah, for me. <laughs> I know it's it's true. It's true. So yeah, I've been, I've been very lucky um, and fortunate in the last year. It's been. Um, a lot of, lot of sales and it's been great for me. And yeah, I was starting to stress out about a month or two ago that I, I didn't have enough <laughs> inventory. So. Is most of your sales uh, taking place with the client, previous clients, new clients? How is that happening for you? New, you know, my husband, so he opened a gallery here in, in Arizona in Scottsdale. And so a lot of it has been through clients coming through the gallery there. So I show at the gallery. A lot of people who come from New York and California, I would say those are my, my biggest clients. And then um, starting relationships with people. And then, yeah, and then they're, they're buying more paintings from me than, than just the one. In Arizona here, the style has been very Southwestern. And I'm a sort of, I paint larger, more abstract pieces. I paint women, and that's sort of new for Arizona. Just you know, a little bit. There is a, there is some of it, but the style is typically southwestern. So I think right. New York, California, is drawn to yeah. it. Well, I love your your colors. Um, Thank it's you. really nature inspired, and um, your paintings really express emotion to me. Uh, just not not only through the colors but the brush strokes and um, also the, the very size expresses um, an expansiveness um, uh, that is uh, wonderful to see in your work it obviously it wouldn't work if it was small because of the very nature of your abstraction um, has your work in any way changed as a result of uh, the isolation and this pandemic? You know, it's interesting. I've, I've thought a lot about that. I started my, I started painting about 20 years ago. Um, I had a tragic experience. My, my, one of my daughters, she died and it was a physical experience and I had never painted before, but I needed a physical, um, a physical way to heal and so mm. I chose painting and so right now with everything that's going on this is a very familiar feeling to me in terms of accessing emotions about the experience of 
looking at death and looking at death mm -hmm. in a way that's um, real and, 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 and positive. So I've sort of gone through the journey of healing through painting and then the, what healed me through that I access as I paint. And so this has, I have some memories about that as I'm painting right now, which is really interesting for me. Well, I, I can see that uh, in your work, actually. Uh, there's, um, within the painting itself, there seems to be a visual evolution of what is taking place. Um, and it comes through beautifully because you've been able to um, express depth perception, as in, um, what was the painting? Where We Walk, I think, is the painting that I was looking at earlier that has this wonderful way of expressing depth. And um, I, can, I can feel a lot of emotion in that particular painting. Thank you. Yeah, it's very, I believe, you know, for me, nature, I'm sort of very mystical. I believe nature mm -hmm. um, offers us so much. and. Mm -hmm. So when I paint, I'm really having a mystical experience in the sense like I'm surrendering myself to, to what it is. And I don't often know what it is. I start with a plan, but then I need to trust my intuition, which is also an interesting journey and an experience through my painting. But it is very layered, very organic, very, I love how the things work, the colors work together and how they layer. And, and so my biggest problem often is my paintings are wet for too long because I have so many <laughs> layers on them. <laughs> and so when a client comes in, I'll give you the painting. However, we're going to need to wait a few months. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so you also, I noticed that you also have uh, limited editions of yes. your paintings. Not all, but uh, some. And then um, some of the, uh, the part of the addition, I think, is um, hand painted, uh, yes. correct? Or is that yes. the entire edition of 100? <clears throat> Do you paint a, a portion of, the, of that edition or all of that edition? I paint uh, all of the editions. So I will have it printed on canvas. Um, I have it professionally photographed and then I will because a lot of my pieces I think what I, I I'm they're very textured and so and, and then I also like to do that for people who maybe can't afford the original but it, it it just feels right to me to to paint on it myself I feel like I need to be connected to it and then and then give it to its owner and so that's just something that's important to me I, I, I like the whole idea of, of being able to offer your work to um, a, a different audience who cannot, are not in the market to purchase the paintings. But I, I also think that uh, when you do work by hand on a print, it becomes more of a monoprint because each one is actually different from the previous. It's never the same. So in, in it, and uh, in essence, what you could do is split up the edition so that you have some that are not painted at a, at a lower cost. And then those that are hand painted, they're hand painted monoprints basically. Right. And they can fall into another price category. So you have the originals, you have the hand painted monoprints, and you have the prints. That's a great idea. Yeah, I do offer prints that are um, printed on, on other paper that I don't hand print on. And that's, um, I do do some of that as well. But yeah, I know what you're saying. It makes a lot of sense. Good, I'm glad. You're just wonderful at layering, which is the reason why it takes forever for your paintings to, to dry. But that is the reason why you're able to uh, achieves such depth within your work. Yeah, I think, I think one that, of the reasons. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I enjoy, I think 
Um, for me, it really is the play of it and the experience of, of painting. And so that's why I think the layering will always be part of my painting because it's sort of the dance of it all. So the piece behind me is a piece that I was working on a few months ago, and it's part of a series I do, I've been working on inspired by John Muir. He was an environmental philosopher and he walked mm -hmm. the earth and wrote poetry about it and just right. inspired the love of the earth. And so that's very much inspired me. I've done numerous pieces with that. This one is called I only went for a walk and it's based on the quote and I love this quote. I only went for a walk and finally concluded to stay out till sundown for going out. I found I was really going in. Oh, and that's beautiful. And that's really, yeah, I think that really, you know, says yeah. what I, what I do. It's the going in and, and, and that. So. Yeah, that's, that's fabulous. Pretty. I was reminded actually of, um, of Walden Pond and Perot and uh, constructive solitude and how uh, he he built his cabin in the woods in in order to go in and, and really search his soul um, during a time when he was uh, trying to write uh, right. and so I think so much good can come out of, of um, solitude it, it changes obviously when we don't elect to be alone when we are <laughs> we we are told to to shelter in place is very different from selecting to be alone uh, and so and so these are things I think that we can explore uh, as we move forward and as um, as artists uh, you have the perfect time to be able to do that agreed it's a mixed yeah. blessing really it is it is and uh, we always have to look for the positive and everything and and uh, that's how we survive on so many levels absolutely yeah and to yeah. support each other it's, absolutely it's been, yeah it's been a beautiful experience in a sense throughout this yeah. whole thing yeah well yeah. I, your work is wonderful i love it and i hope to see it in person one day Thank you. I'm looking forward to coming in October. So that's great. <laughs> Likewise. <Yep. laughs> all right. right. Well, thank you all. This was, it, it's really, this was really nice um, to see everyone's space and, and be able to connect and have even more connectedness, like we were saying earlier, than we might have otherwise. Yeah. I was saying we should do this all the time. You know, it's funny. Yeah. We were talking earlier about how we've been able to to speak and see people that maybe we haven't spoken to in so long or that we're normally just emailing with and like you said not putting the faces with the work and the and you so it's really nice to see everyone in this space. yeah likewise it's good to see you and, and thank you and and Andra for putting this together they're so beautifully you're doing a wonderful job and uh, it's uh, a great opportunity